All right, so these agents that are sitting up here, they run events at various levels. Um, and it's definitely a wonderful lead generation pillar for them. So my goal for all of you is that you take away something from today that you can implement right away. I keep feeling Kelly will pass it. In the very back of your packet is an intentional implementation work. <laughs> So you see, we've got Tracy Georgia, who is your culture and fun committee. <laughs> I am responsible for creating a culture of productivity. So when you look at the back of your packet, this is here to help you take some notes, organize them into your top 10 takeaways, then the top five things that you want to implement to narrow down to the one thing you're going to do in the next 24 hours to make it happen. Because if you leave here and you don't do anything in the next 24 hours, a quarter from now, you're going to be saying, gosh, I really need to do events, and you're not going to have anything scheduled. Make sense? Yeah. All right. So we'll get started. Um, if you all just want to... I'm going to ask the question, but I'm okay with no particular order. If you feel like we need to do a particular order, let me know. But I think we're a good portal group. Yeah. I'm for all. Yeah. I mean, I have. This is all in for Kyle. Yeah. yeah. All she's filling in for Kyle. Kyle's the real mastermind behind the Ulsh team events. Um, what types of events have you found most effective for connecting with your database as well as growing your business and why? <laughs> So for me, the most successful ones are the ones that are not, that I don't plan to the T. Things that I do like socially send out a mass email or text and tell my past clients that we should meet at the winery. And I buy like, a, I, I'll buy everybody like wine tasting certificates that cost about $7. And the more casual event I've thrown, the more successful. So I've done like the structure ones that go out way in advance and email and follow up with text. But the the best ones are the micro events that I do that I send out text message that I'm just having something casual at the winery and I'll sit in a corner and they just come. That tends to be the most um the the them, those events I can actually go back and trace transactions to because they bring a friend they post about it it's um and it's also the least expensive event that I do because I pay seven dollars a person I might buy a few bottles to put on the table but I'll just pay for like for a wine tasting and um that to me the kind of casual relaxed just fun time. If I can go back and trace transactions to it. I love that. It's simple. Simple. So how many people? Like 30. Cool. That's okay. It started like 10. Yeah. And now it's up to like 30. And I probably say I'd invite around 50. Okay. That's where I'd be next. How often do you get yeah. Well, in this when the spring starts, I do one and then in the middle of the summer. So twice. And it's just like not super planned like i've i've added the last time i bought like several appetizers from the food trucks but it's low cost and it's just kind of like turned out to, it turns out to be like a mom's meet a, a few hours away from the kids kind of event mm -hmm. that's like really that. cool miss julie okay so i'm just going to rapid fire real quick so okay. we do plan out a whole year ahead 
So we have a calendar and for your business plan, we plan it and we do four major events and then every month we have something. And that has really helped us. It helps us to, first of all, be organized at, on top of it. And then every event that we have, we should always have eight touches. So we make sure, and you guys have to remember something when you're planning the event, we just saw a study every 12 days, they forget that you're a real estate agent. So the whole purpose of this is to be top of mind, top of mind. Top of mind. So my advice, don't get offended. If you don't have a ton of people, just know that you're staying top of mind with each one that we do at least eight touches. And we have that all written out. So anybody can you know borrow that. I love that. So really the power for you is in the touches around the event. Yeah, the because event is like the idea. right. Not everybody's going to come. You know, you're going to hit different things, you know, different people for different, but we have like four big ones. Like we're having one Thursday for what we call our A group. That's anybody that referred, bought and sold. So we're having a wine pairing dinner at a brewery on the East shore. And then, um, you know, the first quarter, um, happy hours. Great. I mean, people just love happy hours. You just can't, they're the, the biggest attendant. <laughs> what can I say? Like the line night. Yeah, it is. Yeah, and that's the biggest attendance. But that's what we were told from the people that we copied from. We've copied everything, so nothing's been our idea. But by talking to other agents throughout the, the company, is that it's the touches that you're getting. And then even afterwards, you do a sorry we missed you. We'll catch you the next time. Or it was great seeing you. So it's all those type of things. It's not like a half hundred people and we had a great time. It's how many people did I get to stay top of mind mm -hmm. and really yeah. connect? And yeah. I want to add to the touches, the nothing beats the phone. Because at the yeah. beginning, when I first started, I was sent out an email, but nothing beats the phone. The phone. So you have to pick up the phone. Like the success is when you call somebody and they say, we can't make that. And then you're like, is there anything that you need right now? And they go, yeah, as a matter of fact, we're thinking of this. And my friend's thinking about moving. So you're calling them to remind them to come the night before, whatever. It's like you said, it's the phone. Mm -hmm. And then they say, well, is there anything I can help you with right now that you guys may need? So it's just another way to keep, stay top of mind. Mm -hmm. So it's part of the business plan for us. I have a, I have a question, actually. Yeah, go ahead. That's okay. So it, you have a quarterly event and a monthly event. Mm -hmm. how, how, are, how far out are you marketing each event? And are you having challenges with all of the overlap of marketing events so i used to think that that was a drunk monkey so i don't worry about that now uh -huh. at all because not everybody comes to everything right so when we do the blessing baskets like there's people we never hear from and then all of a sudden they show up with a blessing basket because we hit on their core value right. which is giving back to the community mm -hmm. so i don't worry about it. there's people that don't drink alcohol no way so they don't come to the happy hours, the happy hours. but then they'll come oh for pie everybody comes for pie it's the craziest thing Right, Michelle, that you have a lot of people come for a pie. I, they're Costco pies, mm -hmm. but they come for the pies. So I don't worry about that anymore mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. I know that some are going to, they're always going to be a different, but we're still top of mind mm -hmm. because, mm -hmm. like I said, they can forget that, you know, you're the agent for life. Yeah. yeah. So how, how far out are you tending to start to market each event? So the quarterlies, we're out pretty far. Mm -hmm. We're out about mm -hmm. six, seven weeks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because we need some, you know, numbers for those. The monthly ones are just real small things. You know, we do um, we do things like um, contests, you know, guess Julie's car and you get two tickets to go to the car show, okay. something like that. So gotcha. the smaller ones we filter in, mm -hmm. um, but the four big ones, we usually go out about six weeks. Gotcha. That yeah. helps. Thank six you. Six weeks. And all credit goes to Julianne. I do none of it. So she does all the marketing, the flyers, the, te the text. I do all the phone work, but I take no credit on any of that whatsoever. I just come up with the idea and drive her crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Michelle, um, ours, we, we too plan out for the entire year. So we'll sit down at the fourth quarter of the previous year and start planning for the next year. So we have something planned for every quarter. We have four major events. Um, and for us, I find it's repetition. You know, we have the same, we have the events every year around the same time and then people come to expect it mm -hmm. and they like it and they tell their friends about it. So that's working for us, but we always, our biggest one is always in June. That's coming up uh, next month. That's our baseball game. We usually get about 120 to 130 people at that. 
those invites go out about six weeks ahead of time. Um, the Thanksgiving pies are enormous. That's grown for us. Now we have little appetizers also with that when they come in because they come to us to pick that up. Um, we have um, the fall blast has turned into one of our major events, which is great because that's a plug and play. And that is so easy for us as agents to do because they do everything for you. You're just sending out the invites. Um, it's a very cost effective way to get all your people together. So when we do that in the fall, October, um, we, we got to take advantage of it. It's a great way to get your people here at low cost to you as the agent. Um, but yeah, ours ours come from you know phone calls. We tried one year doing an uh, event right, didn't work. Didn't work. We didn't find that people felt like they were really invited. So mm -hmm. we can that quickly. So we I don't I personally don't recommend doing you right. know event right. Yeah. So we it comes back to the old. Old school, like we send out a paper invite, they get an envelope with the invite, and then we call the follow up, and then they either call or text us for a response, so that generates a conversation. Mm -hmm. So we always look for it, you have to call or text us. Same, I did it, you bite, and I had my results. Yeah, yeah. Me too. Yeah. I thought it was going to be more streamlined, but people just didn't feel like it was as personal. So that you, makes sense. Like, that idea. Maybe, you know, we talked about my bet earlier, like they probably have that thought of, oh, they're just, they're not meeting me. Right. Mm -hmm. like, uh, yeah. yeah. But yeah. So, what about Twilio? We've had that, that has not worked. Is that a text what? Well, the Twilio and Taxi? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we tried that one year as a reminder. And, and Slide Dialer is a good one. That did not work. So we took that off right away. In what way? Uh, well, one guy really texted back, like, I don't know who you are. And it was so vulgar that I called him and said, Hey, he said he would help me down. So I called him and said, Hey, it's Julie Hunts from Keller Williams. I'm going to make this really easy for you. Here's my address. Da, 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 da. So now you don't have to hunt me down. He was like, oh, Mrs. Hess, I'm so sorry. I didn't know it was you. Well, here's the thing. Do you want you and your mom to see what you just said? <laughs> this, is, this is something that I did so we because- we that one out right away. Well, I finally got, I finally, like last year, got into the Twilio thing. And what I did to start out with was said, hey, this is Kim with Keller Williams. Save this number as part of my contacts okay. so that you know that it's me. Yeah. And I have sent reminders out about that as well via Twilio for people who are newer to my database. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like yeah. it's something that you've got to do periodically so people do know who you are when they get that text. Yeah. yeah. But mine, I buy the business. And mine, mine has my name and I put this my that's my business line and I put my self personal cell phone at the bottom so that they know. Yeah. Because I got written messages before too. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh my word. Yeah. Yeah, like don't stop texting me. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. So, right. 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 So what's the original question we asked? What makes you the best and you found most effective for connecting? And I think we're also adding in strategies for maximizing those events. Cool. Okay. So I so my previous life was in, with a big team, and then here I'm just right now. It's it's me, myself, and I. Like, but um, I've always found the the more intimate the event, like the more the more space and the less like frills, the more I can really connect heart to heart with my clients. Like we, the, the team I was on, they had some smaller events years previous. Then they did this one, which was just like way more like. 5x more expensive and the, the, the ROI was way less from where I and I just I couldn't understand until it, there was not it didn't feel like it was in line with that brand and also it wasn't wasn't the space to sort of connect with the people there's too much to do too many things distracting um I I just did this year uh, in March a donut party for 150 bucks and I had 80 people come through and I talked to every single one for like five to 10 minutes at least, and it was just awesome. So simplicity and like from the heart, I think. Well, then, then you, like you said, you want to make sure you can, you're able to connect with everybody who's there, whether it's yeah. a thanks for coming, you know, it's a it's a face-to-face, -face, but really that's the point of it, is to connect with everybody who's there. If you're not in an environment that's conducive to that, then it's probably not going to work. We One year we tried a movie night, 
Mm -hmm. I, I would recommend it. We saw them when they came in, but once everybody sat down mm -hmm. in the movie, I didn't see them and then they left after. Right. Mm -hmm. so, exactly. so, so that's it, right? So we're going to forward. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we try something. Yeah, I would say, and so we have tried those big events and we don't anymore. So we plan how far as well. We do eighth a year. So we will go month to month, except for uh, like when we don't do one in December or January anymore. We're just having a hard time getting people. So uh, we have a big one on Thursday, um, Scar and Bourbon Night. Ooh, uh, I, I didn't get that. I didn't get that. But so we do intimate events. So we try to keep our invite list at about 30. Uh, and so we'll do six in a row, so six months in a row. Um, and so we, our only requirement to get an invite uh, after the first two was give us a referral. So we also hire videographers to record the whole event. Um, so some of you might have seen on our social media, we get we get requests to attend now. So we have about 50 people have asked to come to our event next week, and it's 30 people. So our requirement is give us a, a referral and you're invited. And we say that in our videos so that we don't offend anybody because we're doing small events. Mm -hmm. uh, and so it's always you want to be the next person here reach out to us with somebody we can talk to about real estate and you're on the invite list. Uh, so, you know, it, the other thing is we pick things that are interesting. We brought in somebody from Austin, Texas to do brisket. We do cigar nights. We do bourbon with really rare, hard to get bourbon. We had a cigar roller in to demonstrate how to roll uh, cigars. We did something with Sun Motors and Audi. Um, we try to make it something that somebody wants to come to. We do it on Thursdays during football season. We will mm. run it late and put on, you know, the Thursday night football game for people who want to stay. Um, so far, and, and again, the easiest way for us to, to our invites are ours. So on, on that, so we will create a, a PDF that we start by texting saying it's coming up. This is the date. Uh, then it's followed up by by phone calls. So, so we went on Thursday. Their first email or first text went out today. We don't even send two weeks notice unless somebody reaches out to us because we find on a Thursday evening all of a sudden we people are like, oh, I can't. My kids got this this event where I've got to watch, you know, something else going on. And so we start now. We'll get immediate responses. Some we won't hear from today. We'll get a phone call tomorrow. And then between now and to the day of the event, we'll, well, even the ones who say yes, we'll probably hear from us five times, uh, including the day of, because we do have that much of a waiting list for it. If somebody's not coming, uh, we can reach out to somebody and add somebody um, last minute who will come. Mm -hmm. So we need to make, and again, a lot of this stuff is, we in, the, in February, we put the golf simulator place and, um, did that entire thing for, for three or four hours. So I uh, took over the whole place. So, you know, we have a schedule where we need to fill 30 slots. Uh, we don't want to have a 28 situation. And and it's easy to track because we're, we're and then we send a survey afterwards and our survey is always, who do you know? And top of, you know, bring us a referral, which is funny now because we get people who don't give us referrals until they show up because they want to, Announce they're giving us a, a, a referral at the event, but we always do a follow up survey and how was the event? You know, which you know who who should we invite next time to this event? Um, and we get a lot of responses back on who we should invite. That's awesome. So it sounds like for you, it's you know exclusive event. You're creating FOMO on social media, and the amount of touches you're doing around the event. We just again remind I me mean, one of the biggest things that you can drop the ball on an event is not even reach, you know, reaching out the day before, reaching out the day of. You've got to keep you know, those will be texts, yeah, uh, from your own personal phone. Uh, but but they have to re, you have to keep reminding them because mm -hmm. things change. And again, <laughs> particularly in the beginning, like we had to do our first few events at a really high, high level, high level because we wanted to make sure we got people to show up. Uh, now it's easier because they just know the event's going to be good. And so uh, 
you know, we don't have people backing out the last second unless something really comes up uh, with them. Um, the other part of that is when we were doing, we did used to do four a year with like 100, 150 people. We used to do a baseball game. We did a movie theater too. Um, and what we were finding is we looked, we had very little contact at it. You were like, even even working in that Clipper event. Like you, it's hard to get FaceTime with with people when you have that many people. One person takes fifteen or twenty minutes of your time. The next person just says hi as you're walking by, get a beer. Mm -hmm. So by doing these smaller events at a at a you know we run them at about a thousand bucks in event, um, and we can get partners for them. Um, them. Those partners happen to be cigar smoking bourbon people. We they always want to step up and sponsor those. Um, but um, by working these smaller events. 30 people there, we'll talk to them all night. Um, and so it's much more personal. It's much easier to find out what's going on with them or their businesses. We also try to get, uh, like when we do food or cigars, we try to, to work with new businesses in the area. Uh, we have our videographer make them a video for free as being part of our thing. So they get social media promotion from it too. So we're just making reels off the videos. So when we had the, the brisket guy, he was brand new to doing this as a catering type of thing. We built him, between the people we introduced him to at the event and between social media, this, that was in October, he got seven catering deals out of that. Mm -hmm. And he had just started, we were his first catering dealer. Wow. And so we try to partner with people who will give up something. And a lot of times we make sure they get made whole, but they're at their cost. Um, and in return, we promote the crap out of them uh, and give them, you know, we pay around 600, I think, for videographer work, and they're going to get two to three shorts of just that. Uh, you know, our, our names get dropped in as the event, but but it's really focused on them, not a, not on us for, for those. I love that building relationships with the vendors, getting the additional exposure. How would you say um, you're measuring the success of your events? That's for anybody. Yeah, yeah I think it's easy for us to sell like by people asking you to, to, to attend and the fact that we have a measurable, which is you have to give us a referral. I mean, we get 17 referrals. We convert five of them, four of them. Well, I mean, maybe the long term. I mean, again, we've been doing this for nine months. So some of them are certainly new, but by having a measurable for us, it's like we have to give us a referral to 10. Mm -hmm. Right. So, it's, so a thousand yeah. bucks in it or 20,000 in return, you're getting four to five deals. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? At the end of the year, I go through every single transaction and almost like clockwork, the people who attend um, my event or event, um, I can change back the referral. Yeah. Okay. And even if they don't go and I invite them, I can still trace that like a Facebook referral. Or like they'll send somebody will text me and say, so and so sent me your number. And I can always, I would say at least three to four transactions a year can go back to to the winery. Okay. Do you tag it at all in command? I'm starting to now. I just started last year. Um because I was my command is still a mess, but it's getting better. Don't judge me. 1% Don't judge me. But I am now like I'm also using like the note feature in command. Okay. So even if they can't attend, I'll write my I'll go in there and say that I called them, I spoke to them, and kind of just so that I can and I'll send a reminder in command so that I can reach out to them two months later to prepare for another. And I also do things for like their kids. Like I'm I, I'm gonna have at Olympic, I'm gonna have a skating party. And they're allowed to bring their friends and their family. And if, if you just pay a, that's a really inexpensive event. If you work with clients with family, I think I spend like 400 and I, they can invite as many skaters as they want. And I don't pay extra. Oh, wow. So I make that like a family event. And that family event, I'll invite all the kids in the entire school that my kids go to, plus my clients. And I usually, I'll get like two 150 people and it's free for them like so they'll bring a neighbor and while because the parents usually don't pay so while the kids are skating I just kind of like work the rules 
introduce myself to the people that I don't know and kind of just try to connect with people. Because okay. with the bigger events, that's the problem. You don't have time to connect with skating. Sometimes it gets too big, but just I just work the room, make it small. I was born like skating. You guys, <laughs> I thought you guys are invited to my next one. You can have a skate off. See yeah. You have races so, there. Before we go, I just wanted to get it. two things real quick. I was just telling John, he's a bourbon collector. So one thing is like, make sure whatever you're doing, you have a passion for it. Like, exactly. if you don't like something, don't go do it. Like, I'm not going to bowl. I'm going to show up next week, but I'm not going to bowl. My nails are growing, and I don't want to ruin it. So yeah. I'm not going to hurt the nail. The other thing is, Matt taught me a long time ago, Matt, yeah, I'm going to give this credit to you. I love this idea for anybody that's just beginning. I know finances are on your mind. <laughs> and he said, look into your community and see what's going on. <laughs> so, like, for instance, you mentioned, I think Carlisle has opened container, and, and so they have this free concert that you can set up a tent and then you can just text people and say, hey, stop by our tent. See us if you're coming to the concert and have a make a specialty drink or something. Like this weekend, Camp Hill's having their art festival, which I love art. So we're working on something if we're there. Hey, stop by. We'll be on the porch of the one restaurant. You know, so you can do something really, really simple that doesn't cost a lot. And then Meg Davey, look her up. She's from Chicago. She's an agent that went very micro like you're talking about and she goes real micro and it has changed her business like she'll take 10 women and she'll do a spa night with them you know nails and you know um Obviously, pedicures and you know wine and cheese and then she'll take 10 other people and do something she's gone real micro and she said it has changed her business and she does one a month and she's gone very very and it's made a world of difference in her business so mm -hmm. She has a magazine too. She's what? She has a magazine too. She sent out digital magazine. I don't and also don't be afraid to partner because I partnered like in December we partnered for Christmas and we got we went half on Santa and a photographer. And <laughs> 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 Question for John, you, um, with your events, uh, and you have, you know, they're, they're small, small group of people. So not everybody gets invited. Do you, are it's, is it pretty much the same people getting invited over and over, or are you kind of spreading it away? There is, there's probably, I just did it yesterday. So I probably say there's. 12, 14 people who routinely get invited and they routinely show up with, with referrals. Yeah. They happen to be in industries in which they deal with a lot of people. <laughs> um, and they, they kind of, they, and then they are in sales as well in a lot of cases. Yeah. And so they actually like the whole concept because they're picking up new clients. When I was going to say they get to meet each other in, yeah. in addition. I mean, to and we're not necessarily all the inviting people in, in, in the business world, but it turns out that a lot of them are. They're in personal wealth management, banking. Um, we've got a we've got a, a somebody who's does uh, landscape work that routinely is referring us to clients because they're talking clients all the time and they like our events. Um, I would say a lot of our events are maybe somewhat male driven, but a lot of them bring their their spouses so we always, when we do a bourbon cigar night, we'll have wine and we do food. And so, uh, yeah, so there, there, we have some, we have some cigars, so cigars with the females as well. Yes. So when you're um, booking those events, how do you promote it that it doesn't seem marketing, like that you are going to come and buy a house? Do you do flyers? Do you use Keller Williams anywhere? Or do you invite those? So because we're keeping it kind of small, 30, 30 people, um, it's usually a combination of relationships we already have when we started. And then now the, we, we count on the people we invite to promote it to the, someone else. So occasionally, particularly when we're, we're looking at numbers and on the last minute, we might start reaching out to some of our, our people saying we're at 25 or 6 and we can go to 30 we might reach out to someone that we know who's coming 
and say, do you have somebody you want to invite tonight? We still have four openings. At least everyone knows that there's about a 30 person cutoff on this. We'll go 31, 32 if somebody wants to bring their spouse and you know they're not going to smoke a cigar because we don't have extra ones, or uh, particularly when somebody's coming. Um, but a lot of times we count on them to promote it. And, and then we use the videos afterwards. So we usually have three to four reels uh, that we can promote one a week about from that event afterwards. Mm -hmm. uh, so we let the, the videos kind of promote it yeah. um, after the fact. And the fact that we're kind of committed to one a month for most of the, for most of the year. Uh, the other advantage is we often host it in our office space. So that also cuts down on having to go to another venue. Uh, of course, we, we did the, the golf uh, indoor that we had to go to another venue. We did a, a tour of a, of a new smoke shop. Uh, and so they partnered with it, but most of the time we try to control the environment. So, yeah, for those of you who don't know, you can reserve the training room. So, if you want to host a seminar or a pie giveaway, I think we had a shredding event here the other day, you can reserve the training room. Uh, so that way you don't, and that's free. Yeah, so so that that's back parking lot. Mm -hmm. For the start stuff, we have to go outside. So, we'll close down the back parking lot after buy. I love that. And just so we can be. Careful on time. What is the one question they did not ask each of you that I should have asked you today? Something else that you wish you would have shared. Um, I would say the newer for newer agents who are thinking about um, how expensive this can be. I say mm -hmm. start very small. Yep. Think about the donuts. That was something really small. I used to just. Um, Years ago, when I was at Howard Hanna, I would um, just meet other families at the park and have our kids play. And I'll just fill like coolers up with like ices and drinks for the parents and make that into a non formal event. Just an opportunity to connect with people. So when you think of events, you don't have to go the bougie route with a cigar roll. <laughs> <laughs> I would say we can, you can start if you're new with something simple. The the point of a the or point you of do a bougie with ten people right I mean, right yeah, yeah. Right, right yeah but the point is that when you're starting you're nervous <laughs> about spending money just think about it as an event as just an opportunity to connect with people that you know like and that trust you so it can be super simple I just saw somebody at another state. That she invited her whole sphere to have like picnics and each family bought their own stuff. And she had like an ice cream truck pull up. Could be something simple like that. I, at the end of the year, I ran an ice cream truck for my daughter's track team. I think it, at the end, the entire track team, it'll cost me maybe $200. Mm -hmm. And like the school is shouting me out, the PTO is shouting me out. I get a lot of social media hits. It's on email chains. And plus, while I'm there, I'm having like meaningful conversations with the moms. So, that. but you could do something small and still have like a really big impact. Maybe to connect with people. It's more about the thought of being invited. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. I would yeah. say the only big, I mean, the biggest mistake we've ever made is done the facts we weren't, we weren't really passionate about. That's yeah, yeah. Say, yeah, we yeah. just don't, if we not, if we're not, in, like we, we started to only pick and stuff that we were all interested in. Mm -hmm. yeah. And had friends or clients who were interested in it because otherwise if you don't, we're not a team right now. My kids are grown up. We have people on our team don't have kids. So it's it's for us to do, like we did the Santa Claus thing and you said, that was probably our least passionate event because we just don't have a ton of people at that age yeah. that that in our group that is going to bring their kids. For, we had people bring their pets. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but, but you know, that, that was a hard one for, the, for us to get behind because it, we just didn't have a ton of passion for it because we had some kids at that age. Right. We would have friends that had kids at that age, and then we would have just thrown the crap out of it. So, well, that's the thing people can sniff a sales pitch a mile mm -hmm. away. Yeah. So, it's something that you're getting a lot of value, and you can tell the people are not there to just get referrals and like, or you'd be like, that's to be so transparent that you can't yeah, get an invite if you yeah. give us a return. Yeah, and that's what I meant. Is that you either have to decide if you're a transactional you can be walking, uh, walking. agent that you're just gonna burn and churn, burn and churn, or you can decide whether you're gonna be a relationship. Based. Right. And that's what we're, we're very thankful. These are client appreciations. We appreciate everybody that uses us. 
And so do we do them where many times we get that? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. We'll be the first to tell you. Our team will say, did you? No, nope, do you? No, nope. we just mingled and really had a great time yeah. because we do appreciate them. Um, and I'm with John. Like we tried to put a photo shoot together recently with pets and we couldn't figure it out. We had three people coming. So we told them, we're going to have to postpone this a little bit. Because the other thing we found too is if you're doing something, Michelle, we talked about this with the shredder. Mm -hmm. Our thing is that we want to make everything easy for our clients during a transaction. And we have the shredder here. And it wasn't until we were here, we were like, dang, we should have taken the shredder to our development. So anybody <laughs> like development oh, or you're farming, yeah. if you're farming a development, we farm two or three, think about their needs and make it easy for them. So and we were sitting here making them come to us on a rainy Saturday. Mm -hmm. And then I was on with Michael Mayer watching one of his who just did one and got like 45 leaves because he took it to the neighborhood. And I was like, oh, never thought about that. That's cheap. That's a great so idea. So same thing. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Like everything we do, we try to figure out how to make it easy for them to attend. Yeah. So. Same with the same with the food truck. Take a food truck to your neighborhood yep. if you live in a big neighborhood. It doesn't have to be big, but have a food truck go to the neighborhood and just put it out on your Facebook page in your neighborhood. You have an email chain, walk door to door. Hey, the food truck's gonna be here Thursday night after practice, whatever. Um, but it is it is all about building relationships and showing people that you care and you're coming for contribution. And then um, from there, they're, they're, they're going to tell people. They're going to tell people what you do for them. So, you know, keep it small. It doesn't not, like Damaris said, it doesn't have to be expensive. Um, but just the thought of being invited to an event and just keep it casual. Keep it casual. Mm -hmm. Make it skills. Yeah. Nothing significant to add. <laughs> I have a question for Michelle. Yeah. When you say you send out invitations, mm -hmm. are they flyers? Are they personal? Is it a letter? Is it a, it's it's a, a letter? letter. Yeah. Yeah. Stamp us. It takes it takes a while, but we have found that that is the most successful for us when we're doing our large events. Is they right. want to see an envelope addressed to them. And they know it's from us, and they truly are getting an invite. And it comes in the mail. And it comes in all about that. Yeah, it's right. like we write personal notes. They yeah. Email. 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 There is no email. I'm telling you guys, they yeah. still go to their mailbox. And so many agents are open. You'll see that. You know, you know, there, and hold it up. I guarantee you guys, there's only very few amount that do work for time. Mm -hmm. I was just recently somewhere and a big team wanted to know who I was talking to because they were like, we did a deal for her. And then she kept, they were like, what's her name? So I told her, I know the woman real well. And then at the dinner table, the woman said to me, who was that? And I'm like, well, that's the team that listed to your home. Yeah. And never heard from them again. So yeah. appreciate your clients. Mm -hmm. They'll appreciate you. That's right. Brittany, I love that. Yeah, I'm not doing a personal event, but on Saturday, my dog groomer is having a fundraiser for a rescue. Okay. And I asked her if we could jump on board and help her. So we are going, Sean and I, we are, I'm doing it as a realtor from Keller Williams. We are going to be doing snow cones, cotton candy, and popcorn That's for the good. event. And, you know, just see if we can get some connections That's like that. That's pretty cool. Yeah. And that's, you know, we're going to donate everything and just do a uh, donation for it. Because usually if you just do donations, you get more than just saying it's a dollar. Yeah. So her work in that way, we're getting connected with her clientele and whomever. That's such a good idea. And you're just plugging into her. 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 Oh my God. I want to say, and they're the rescue of you know, every dog to be adopted. And so it's going to be, and I'm going to take Buddy, who was rescued off the street and can't hear. And, yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. That's awesome. That's awesome. I, 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 share on that. I, did a, I did a plug and play event in March. I donated oysters to someone's oyster fest. They sent the invites out. I brought the oysters. I shucked oysters all night and I got three pieces of business from it already. That's crazy. Yeah. That's so great. Someone else, someone else, someone else, someone else, yeah. else yeah. the bandwagon. It's like you're, you're going to sponsor. You're gonna right. Help someone else. Yeah. That's why yeah. you're in the camp of bar. They have a caramel. I'll mm -hmm. be going here all day. And, and just, just, and just food for thought, anyone. Yeah. So, um, cotton candy, snow cones, popcorn, whatever else is. 
I own that equipment. <laughs> <laughs> um, as Ben knows, he got in charge of cotton candy one one year for yeah yeah. <laughs> No, I love that. Thanks for sharing. Because that is for agents who aren't ready to plan like a huge event. That's a very easy way of participating, but not having to do all the organizing that a lot of us don't have time or resources to do. Yeah. Awesome. Lot, lot, don't be afraid to partner. We're always open to agents partnering. Yeah. And we all are. Yeah. We're very happy to have somebody partner with us. <laughs> And thank you all for volunteering your time and sharing. Thank you so much. Any other people? Awesome. Event is something that I've been kind of struggling with. So all of this information yeah. was really, really helpful. Me too. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I want to.